Um, thanks for coming back from lunch and from the sun outside. Um, so my, there's two bad news. I have a bad news presentation with an uplifting end, I hope. Um, and uh, personal bad news is I have to wake you up from food coma. Um, I think both may work together. Uh, you may judge that after, afterwards. Um, we've spent the budget, now what is uh, the title? How many of you guys are agency people? Ah. And how many come from organizations, companies? Just a few. All right. I have mostly advice for agency people <laughs> or learnings, uh, but I think it's probably also interesting for, uh, for, for company folks um, doing content strategy, communications, PR, whatever, um, to learn something about um, how to budget projects right, because we, as an agency, um, we're called Ozeon, we're based here in Frankfurt, we do communications for innovation topics, all kinds of techie companies, business models, new services, things like that. Uh, we had to learn it the hard way with a project I'm going to talk about. And um, just briefly about me, you'll find me on Twitter with that uh, name. Uh, I've been in the communications PR business traditionally for, for 12 years now, mainly in the B2B space. Um, uh, usually I, I describe myself as someone who translates complex things for a wider audience or for a target audience. We try to take complexity out of complex things that make life easier or change, change work life. And um, I've also co-written uh, a book called this, this one. It's in German. If you read German, maybe I'll do a little raffle and one of you can take that with a signature. Also, Marie-Christine, my co-author, is also here. Um, so not here in the room, but at the event, she's part of the curator forum uh, or the board of the, uh, the conference. Um, Anyway, en enough about me. Um, hashtag for this talk is CSF budget. Uh, if you like it, tweet it. If you don't, uh, please tell me afterwards, uh, specifically what you didn't like. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, a project uh, called Kotalo. This is the, the logo. Uh, it's a web magazine we created in, in 2012 uh, for a US-based software company called Actuate. Actuate is a business intelligence software company. For those of you not familiar with that jargon, it's uh, essentially software that takes loads of data and turns it into interesting insights for businesses and uh, also some sort of predictive <laughs> forecasting, uh, something that Dick Becker talked about this morning. Um, usually the board of that company uh, it doesn't wear suits, so uh, I think uh, it's, it's more of a matter of dressing to the occasion than dressing in a suit. Um, <laughs> contrary to what Eric said. But anyway, um, the buyers uh, of Actuate Software, and that's, that's, that's an interesting, or that's the target group we, we're going to talk about, that's why it's highlighted. It's uh, heads of IT and CIOs, and people who pre prepare their buying decisions are project man uh, managers and data scientists in those organizations. Those are the people who actually work with the software, and these are the ones who have the budget to um, kind of pay tens of thousands of dollars or sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars per year uh, to license a business intelligence software. So it's a uh, fairly complex but very narrow target group um, audience. And uh, the users of it are actually from bank clerks to you know, someone like a data scientist who actually crunches numbers. Um, so that said, a um, little more info because that's important for the background of a project as a, as a whole and the, the budgeting and planning process. It w in Germany, Actuate has a fairly small sales and marketing organization. There are two people doing field marketing and events and things like that. Uh, the marketing budget comes from the US, so we have to justify everything that uh, we do um, towards uh, the headquarters. And um, up until 2012, uh, co the communications program or what Actuate did in the German-speaking markets uh, is actually traditional PR, media relations and analyst relations. They uh, you know, had an agency um, writing articles for trade magazines like Business Intelligence magazine, things like that. So fairly traditional communications approach at the beginning. But then um, you know, things evolve and the media market evolves. And we, we have a situation at the beginning which is 
the small vendor PR issue, meaning that um, in a shrinking media landscape, especially in a shrinking trade media landscape, which we see at the moment in, in Germany and across all Europe, um, where editorial offices are cut, publications are closed down, there are fewer editors working on more stories and more stuff that's brought to them through PR. Um, it gets increasingly difficult for smaller vendors from the second or third tier of the IT industry uh, to, to cut through that noise. And um, it's, it's essentially, it's the Microsoft's, IBM's, SAP's, and Oracle's they write about. Uh, they, they get the headline coverage. Uh, a vendor like Actuate doesn't. So that's a you know, the starting point from a communication strategy point of view. Um, and, of course, we observe, like everyone in everyone's private lives, it's also in business contexts. Buyers move online to prepare their decisions, you know, and, and to get inform information and also inspiration about, you know, where is the future of my business headed? What's expected of me in the future as a data scientist, as an IT project manager, whatever. So... For, for Actuate, uh, it turned out the goal is really uh, is not to kind of compete against the others in terms of media coverage and traditional PR ways, but to really address those target groups I just talked about directly through relevant online content. That's why this is a, essentially a content strategy or content marketing project. Um, and our, you know, what we propose to Actuate is let's take what you really do best at the core of you know, your company is really turning data into business value, into things, ins actionable insights, things that people can take business decisions on. Um, and claim that theme for Actuate and create a place online to tell those stories. You know, stories around this, that topic and, you know, have a, a proper magazine that makes it interesting and, you know, respects or, you know, um, addresses this. People go Google for business decision preparation and, you know, research about solutions and, you know, and get, get them that way. So, on the back of that, Quartale was born. And the content strategy really in three words is, or the, the you know, the, the type of content approach, if you will, was to be, you know, make a web magazine that's, on the one hand, informative for those very specific target groups, but which is also inspiring because, you know, People tend to revisit publications and content and, and outlets online where they find interesting <laughs> stuff they didn't know before. And it also should be entertaining because we found out through kind of a persona research and I saw that there was one um, talk about talking about personas as a planning tool. Our persona research up front showed that um, our audiences were in their daily business work day. They were really busy. Um, doing all kinds of actual project stuff, and they had very little time in, you know, looking across the, um, you know, their, their uh, daily to-do list, or uh, looking beyond that. So uh, we found out that we needed something, or a format, and a way of delivery uh, that would um, kind of address that, what we call information coffee break. The five minutes in between where you find interesting stuff online and read that because it you know, gets you distracted or you know, helps you get you <laughs> through the day. Or you, know, you have those morning and evening commutes where people go to their job and they have their mobile devices with them um, and uh, use that time to kind of educate themselves on the latest trends and things like that. So what we did is create this magazine, Cotalo. We set up an, a new brand. The idea was, and, uh, and that was a very deliberate decision. We didn't call it the Actuate Business Intelligence Magazine or something like that. It, so, so the brand name wasn't in there. The idea was, because we thought, you know, as communications people, we think long term. We thought this would be kind of a, at least a three, four year project. And then after we'd have enough time to build an audience and a community and, you know, readership and, uh, you know, build this as a go-to place for interesting stories about the business value of data. Not just for the specific audiences, for them, of course, but also for to wider, wider audiences. But anyway, we, we created this brand, Cotalo, uh, with an own design, with a responsive web design uh, technology behind it, so it worked on all devices. Um, and especially if, if you know the background that 
um, in the financial services industry, which is one of the big target groups or industries actually sales to, um, often people, even though they work in the IT organization, or they work with numbers and data every day, they're not necessarily have full access to the web. So they often have their own private mobile devices sitting on their desk, <laughs> you know, an iPad or something, um, because that gets them outside of the firewall, of the company firewall, which is very restrictive about what type of content they let into the company. Um, so that, besides the, you know, the, the, the work, the, the, the consumed, uh, or the, the, the content consumption situation on the commute and so, uh, this was also a reason why we did this mobile ready, uh, because we wanted people to, you know, have the opportunity to see this um, on their own, bring your own device uh, situations at work. So how did we get an audience there? As you can see, we've you know, built a quite good looking thing. It's still online, so you can see it. If you go to cortalo.de. Um, but in terms of, you know, you know these own page shirt and uh, audience acquisition ways, uh, we of course had a Twitter account, Cortalo. We had a Facebook page specifically for Cortalo. And we did kind of bi-weekly email digests where we'd send you know, the latest articles per email to those who were willing to subscribe. But what we didn't have is, in terms of earned, uh, in terms of owned, <laughs> a proper um, big email marketing distribution list, which would have been very useful for audience acquisition. So we didn't have that, or at least we used it once, the actual internal list, but they were very, very skeptical of Germany, data protection issues. Uh, can you transfer, uh, can you use lists that people subscribe to for one purpose? Can you reuse it for a completely different purpose? It's a very tricky topic, so we, we did a one-shot thing. I'll show you where that worked and that what the effect was on traffic. Uh, but we, we couldn't kind of do it on a sustained basis. For paid, and that's the biggest budget issue, I'm going, you know, you'll see, uh, we didn't have any extra money to promote traffic or to get traffic, acquire traffic f to the site. We had to rely on you know, organic search, which all worked quite nicely. Uh, and we had a little bit of, you know, with a really small, just fledgling Twitter account, we had some bit of retweets. And this was an interesting tool which worked quite well, was getting guest authors on the platform. We wouldn't just have you know, actuate authors. Actually, the, the share of actuate authors were like 10% to 90% other authors. So we would kind of deliberately say, this is an, a platform sponsored by actuate, for this very interesting topic, an emerging topic of, you know, what do you do with data in businesses? All right, that said, uh, let's look at some numbers. <laughs> Thank you. So you s see, it wasn't really successful in that <laughs> respect. <laughs> Google Plus was awful. Google, Google Plus is awful for everything, I think. Um, but uh, what's more interesting, uh, you know, yeah, do, do, do you have money to acquire people on Facebook? You, you know, the organic rates are going down, or the, the organic reach is going down. But overall, I still think content strategy in this case worked because we had 45% organic search traffic, so people came through the topics they were interested in and landed on Cortalo. And they actually read the stuff we wrote. 2 minutes 13 average dwell time isn't too bad. And they actually looked through a number of stories. So overall, the information architecture and design of the magazine, where you would get suggestions for further articles and things like that, worked as well. So people were drawn into the magazine. This is all really good. But overall, traffic sucked. And I'll show you how that looked. This is 2013, the entire year. So we had kind of like 5,500 uniques. It's not much. Not even for a kind of a very narrow target audiences. Um, we had a lot of page views, uh, good share, you know, 32% returning. Um, and we had a couple of incidents where we kind of learned how to, you know, what to do to get more traffic. One was we had guest authors uh, write on the article, uh, write on the platform, and uh, then promote their own article 
through their own channels. So we kind of the secondary reach of those guest authors was, was quite an interesting thing because it helped lift this up here. Uh, we, s we actually started November or the early December uh, in 2012, so I left December out because that's kind of it's not representative and, you know, um, there's another peak there where actually internal people looked at <laughs> looked at the site, so that's neglectable. Um, and then this was the one where we used email to actuate customers. We got one one-time peak. We're quite hopeful that this would kind of lead to a more sustained level of traffic, at least, so that we get more returning from that. But in the end, it turned out to be a one-off uh, kind of peak. And overall, we had a kind of stagnating of returning visitors, uh, or, uh, or the difficulty that despite 30% returning visitors, those didn't really share the stories. So the, the traffic from social didn't pick up. And that's why uh, also the, um, you know, the platform or the, the follower count and, and fan count stayed very low. So that's a bit of, of a bleak picture there. Um, and well, y we of course thought, you know, we, we had this in the, in the back of our minds. This is not what we had in mind in terms of a success. <laughs> of course not. Um, this is at some point, uh, we, or you know, in the beginning we said, okay, let's, let's try and see what we can do with the instruments and the tools we have. I mean, that's what you're used to in, in PR agencies, especially when you work with, with smaller budgets. Uh, you're used to kind of optimizing what, what you have, and you know, if you don't have a lot of money to spend on, on traffic acquisition, then you try other instruments. Um, but uh, at the latest here in May, June or so, uh, we said to the client, listen, this isn't really picking up. We, we need budget to spend on marketing your content. You know, getting audiences, uh, g getting people to, to uh, read the stuff and, you know, build up readership. And they say, mm, sorry, no. This come, and I'll, I'll show you why that is. Um, we, we learned it t the tough way. Um, these are kind of the four big budget blocks strategy in the beginning of all the planning process. Uh, design and development, content production, the ongoing thing, an audience acquisition, and the gray ones are what was available. Just rough figures. Um, oh, sorry. Didn't want to rush too far. So we had uh, roughly like a 10,000 euro flat sum for strategy development. Um, we had around 50, you know, 12,000 or so. We had a really good partner doing this for a little money. They weren't doing the next project that cheap. Um, and we had essentially what was previously a PR budget for content production per year. What we actually needed is about 15,000, <laughs> so 50% plus on strategy, around 30% more for design and development. Quite a nice number more I think 10 or 15,000 more for content production. This is kind of drawn from our own time tracking system as an agency. So uh, these are, you know, it's, it's an orientation for you. And uh, in an ideal world where we would have said, okay, in hindsight, if we had that money, we would probably have made a profit out of it. We didn't make a profit with this project. <laughs> it was essentially was a big learning. Uh, that's why, you know, I've spent the money already, so I'm sharing this learning with you guys. Um, so, and uh, I think for design and development, especially when we look at things like, and I'll come to that, lead tracking mechanisms, um, and you know, what's the, the big ROI question at the end? Um, we would have needed a bit more budget for the technical side of things, and uh, quite a lot more than actually available <laughs> for, for content production, which is still, you know, 60,000, that's, you know, 5,000 euros a month for content production, which is, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a good, but it's not a luxurious PR budget, or it's a, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a reasonable editorial budget for a trade industry or vertical segment topic, fairly specific. Uh, so it's not wishing too much there. Um, and of course, for audience acquisition, and that's a number we, which is a kind of a comparison from a project we're doing at the moment, we, where we used all these learnings, <laughs> 
hope, ideally, um, we would have needed for that for, for fairly targeted audience acquisition around about 2,000 euros per month for proper audience acquisition. So that was the kind of the, the budget situation there, and um, in the end, as you see, overall the project was about 40, 50 percent more expensive than the actual invoices we sent. So. Uh, Actually, the, 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 the client was, you know, they were really kind and a good client agency relationship. They paid some of the extra and some of the extra went on the house. But then, the you know, the, suddenly the client said, it's all nice, but what's the ROI? They didn't actually say that, but you get the idea. You know, w one year in, uh, around... October, November 2013, um, when the project was you know, going for nine months or so, the client wanted to see some sort of marketing return. They thought of, you know, and argued that this project, I mean, it, they argued quite reasonably, I think, that this was an online project, and in online projects you can track everything. So why not track leads? Why not get some sort of cost per lead calculation at least uh, with, because that's the type of thing IT companies usually do. They, you know, evaluate their marketing efforts in cost per lead because that, you know, a lead is usually valid, uh, 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 you know, has a value of, if it's, a, you know, enterprise software, it's value, uh, tens of thousands of euros worth is one lead. And when you sp spend two or five hundred euros, depending on the category, on getting a qualified lead, uh, then that's a good in PR and marketing investment. Um, so they asked all the right marketing and salesy questions. Um, so and and in in the end, we we developed a plan for a Cortalo 1.5 version, uh, which would have integrated, uh, you know, some so sort of lead tracking conversion mechanism. Uh, we thought about, um, you know, collating all the interesting stories from a vertical industry into kind of PDF dossiers, which w you could download behind the registration and things like that. You know, tr traditional, more or less now traditional content marketing tactics. But uh, the interesting question is, why didn't we see this coming as an agency? And if you know, and th th that, that led me to kind of the differences between online PR, which is, you know, me being traditionally kind of, kind of from my heritage a PR person, um, to the kind of the, the, the there's a gap between what online marketers are used to plan for and spend and what PR folks are used to plan for and spend. So, in the end, you have the kind of the online marketing expectations are kind of the 100% thing. There's just re rough relations here. And uh, this is the PR reality, what PR is able to spend usually. PR budgets are much smaller than online marketing budgets, uh, no matter what organization you look at. And so th there's a big expectation gap that comes up. If you, you know, if your decision maker on the client side is an online marketing person or is a marketing or a sales marketing driven person, uh, they of course have the old, all, the, all these expectations. They want a lot of traffic. They want their leads tracked. Oh God. Um, <laughs> uh, five minutes conversions, of course. And, you know, and that's another thing that we as an agency, because we were kind of coming and this was our first big online project. Um, we came from the PR end. Um, we were used to kind of standardizing content production. Uh, a contributed article in the trade magazine was, would cost, if it was 8,000 characters, it would cost X. It was a very planable process and it was easy to budget for us as an agency. Um, Online content production, especially when you have third parties involved, guest authors, uh, you need, in addition to text, you want visual, you want video if, if possible. Um, the entire content production process gets more complex, more long term, you need more resources, and it's much more fast paced because we didn't actually aim to be kind of a, a daily news platform. It was about background, it was about interesting, you know. Um, in-depth information instead of uh, fast-paced information. But still, you need to churn out at least one or two stories every week. And that, you know, uh, puts a strain on resources. So, the, le the key learning there is to fill this gap, or not to let it emerge, 
emerge in the first place is really the question. You have essentially two related questions to answer. Um, what will the content do for the company? Will it, you know, contribute to, to their to their image? Will it convey a PR thing like competence in a special expertise or competence in a special field? Uh, or will it bring new customers? Or will it bring new sales? So as long as you haven't really figured out and agreed with your client what you want to achieve with this platform in the content you're producing for a lot of money, um, you'll probably at some point have this expectation gap or the conflict between what they want to see in terms of metrics and results and that what you thought you were supposed to deliver. Um, so it's a, it's a communication issue there. And, um, you know, and you know, if you've answered that question, you should also have a good answer on how to achieve that. Um, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, the, the takeaways, maybe, and I'll, I'll maybe have a couple of minutes to answer questions, um, is just roughly, before you stand up, plan a project, plan, it, plan your budget, write down what you think it will cost, and add 50%. Then you're probably on the safe side <laughs> or on a realistic side. Um, prepare for the ROI question. You know, the question is wh what will the content do and how will you measure that return in whatever way? You know, leads, whatever. Track it and make sure you have mechanisms that um, track those. And then, for God's sake, don't go for an online content project that's kind of a starts on a green field and um, rely on organic uh, uh, traffic only. Uh, at least use some money in the first couple of months to build your audience. We're doing that just for comparison. It's a bit of a different audience as a wider audience we're doing at the moment for, a, for an HR services company. Uh, we're doing a similar thing. We do a web magazine for students and temporary workers and companies who should employ those temporary workers. So two audiences. Um, it's a lot less complex than Cortalo in its architecture and structure. Um, it has a wider audience, but we're spending only 2,000 euros per month for audience acquisition, and we already had the traffic in the first month, which just finished in June, we already had the traffic of a full year of Actuate's Cortalo. So we had 9,000 visits on the site with just 2,000 euros spent. So there is, you know, it, it doesn't have to be huge marketing budgets, but it, it, it should be really targeted cost per click type uh, content acquisition or audience acquisition uh, techniques you should use. And finally, um, this pretty much maybe sums it up a <laughs> budget like an onla uh, online marketer and write like a journalist. Because in the end, it's still the content that people come from for. You know, it's not because you've lured them into coming to your site uh, through a really clever little, uh, you know, content distribution network ad or a Google ad or whatever you can use. Uh, but in the end, they will stay because you have relevant content. So uh, don't let that get, you know, get put on the back burner, but really fo focus on the content, but do your planning right in the, in the beginning. Um, and uh, the likelihood of having a successful um, web magazine project uh, it's much higher. Uh, you'll find the presentation, it's already uploaded under this link on SlideShare.